All right, and we're back, season two, man. Let's get it, man. Everybody give it up for season two. New Jack Rilla City is going down in a major way, man. It's your boy, Jack Rilla, and here we got a great jump for you today. Man, yo, I'm, I'm over here with two ghetto legends right now, man. You know what I'm saying? These guys right here, man, uh, two of my closest friends, man. Yo, whenever I need some studio time, I'm always calling my boy, uh, uh, King James Worthy. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, you know, he got the I didn't know you was that talented, bro. Mm -hmm. and, 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 hey, dog, you, you ain't heard my new shit. Though. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't heard my new Man, shit. You ain't sent me nothing. <laughs> oh, bro. Hey, listen, we, we got to talk. We got to work. We got some new th situations That's a fact. going on over here. And then I, you know, I, I'm listening to the new project that you got with Gibby. You've been talking about this for a minute now. Come on now. You know what I'm Come saying? On, the mighty, mighty. Uh, 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 Goody Mo B. Come on, man. Yo, get Goody up in this motherfucker, man. What's up, baby? How you doing, oh, King Jack? Hey, yo, it's a pleasure and an honor to have you on this show. I've been seeing you around. You know what I'm saying? I thought you was out here doing Vlad TV interviews out there, bitch. I mean, and what? Now, you you, you everywhere right now well, we talking get, that shit. I mean, we're just trying to give people just a, another alternative yeah. than just following what the narrative is. Bruh. Mm -hmm. I, I loved it. You 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 room wrecking right now. <laughs> you room wrecking right now, man. You know, you know. One of the things that definitely touched my heart. I'm a, I'm one of the biggest Pac fans in the world, and those those untold Pac stories that you that you you put out there. Hey, bro. You know, I just want to salute you and thank you, man. Y'all give it up for Gibbs, man. Yeah, goody. You heard that. You heard it like real light. In the past and everything that you guys were friends mm -hmm. and everything, but when you go into intricate detail about those moments and whatnot, and it's like really paint the pictures, and I don't know if you you've ever talked about it to this extent. No, I I never really talked about. Uh, Is there any particular reason why? Because we come from the nineties, and you know, a lot of them times, you know, you was either there. Yeah, it wasn't no. Uh, internet and none of that kind of stuff. So you know, if you was there and a lot of things happened that was real uh, to the left of uh, being center, a lot of times you just didn't talk about them. One hundred percent. So I can definitely dig you it. You know, uh, you know, we it, it it was a lot different then, and mm -hmm. the and the laws and how we carried ourselves mm -hmm. as a community was different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's I, the reason why I hadn't spoke about it. it. It's a, it's a, it's a. Uh, I'm glad you just said that right now because you just reminded me of a question. I definitely want to ask you about, you know, people people wonder if is things are more dangerous now than they were then. And some people beg the difference and say, nah, it's always been like this, except the difference is You can see it. You can see it. Right, right. Yeah. It's on your phone. And then uh no, it wasn't as bad. Uh, now than it was back then. And I will give you a reason why, because it wasn't no cameras. See, when people got off back then, they knew it wasn't no cameras, so they did you real dirty. Right now, people do it and they jump in the cat and scratch off down the street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just the things that they doing right now. We look at it as like, how are you doing these crimes with so many cameras around? Mm -hmm. That's what my, what, 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 what we would say where I'm at, but I mean, at the same time too, I just think it was a lot different back then because we still gotta understand that the drug culture was new. So the thing of getting money and stuff like that, it was, uh, it caused friction a lot faster, you know, because I think now these kids and what they doing and how they coming up, it's a lot different. You know, a lot of these kids ain't made means of prescription drugs. So <laughs> the, the the danger of getting in trouble or having a violent, you know, you know, uh confrontation is just a lot less. You know, a lot of the stuff that's going on now is just these kids was locked up in the house playing video games, you know, GTA, and then when they let them out for a year, then everybody started doing what they were doing on the games in real life. Mm, mm. That's all, because I just think a lot of this stuff ain't got nothing to do with no real beef. It's just like, it's, it's just we, this is mm -hmm. what this is how we've been kind of programmed mm -hmm. for the last, if, if you say something to them, I'm gonna get off on you. Mm -hmm. But at the same time too, we see ain't nobody, ain't too many people getting off. They can't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they, they mm -hmm. walking you down in a couple of months, you know what I mean? Cause there's cameras everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I just look at it like that, um, no, those times, 85 to 93, ain't nothing uh, messing with that. 
because it was it was mass murder then. And, and bruh, mm-hmm. and, and and I be telling people all the time too, and they don't believe me. Yo, ass whoopings was real, and they were going for the low. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> ass whoopings was half price. Yeah, I, I think. they was on clearance. <laughs> they were liquidating <laughs> the ass. Yeah, I'm talking. My nigga was stuffing yeah. you with boots on. Yeah, until, until your ears was touching. I try and tell people all the time when I first started going to high school, man. You know, they were still initiating kids. <laughs> So you you know that first night that ninth grade year it was like you was running the class it wasn't no walking <laughs> so so I just think that the times has changed a lot of these kids and grew up a lot different yeah sure enough sure a lot enough. different and back then I just think that uh like you said man ass was 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 like that man getting a sandwich it was like you said something wrong but it was like in your chest and 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 then it was on top of it, we wasn't in the guns like that. No. You know what I mean? It was, it was about can you fight? Can you fight? You know, so. It was Streets of Rage. You remember yeah. Streets of Rage for Sega Genesis? Yes, sir. And, it was like that. And we were kids, and we used to watch that movie, The Lo- the uh, the Lost Boys and stuff like that. So it was more about us trying to, trying to uh, you know, get that manhood through beating somebody up. You know, yeah. I, I think yeah. the guns who came out. Yeah, who could fight who the best? You know, because everybody yeah. got up, went home. You, yeah, I would bleed. You know, I look, think no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is from that shit. This is from '90s ass. And what now? You know, you, the world. It one one joke went too many. I before Chris Rock, that was me. Niggas was Will Smith and, and the shit out and, of me. And like Jack, that. I I can believe that, boy. You had my partner two chain hot for a good. <laughs> Little minute, but you had you had chain hot on the south side, hey, bro. Hey, 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 man, listen, <laughs> listen. You know it, you know it too. Hey, you know hey, it too. That's why he laughed. Check this out. <laughs> hey, hey, man, hey, if I if I would have known that he wasn't gonna. If he was dead ass serious, <laughs> I had would have stopped a long time ago. And like when I was when that nigga was saying what he was gonna do to me, I was like, oh my god, I gotta press charges. On <laughs> no, no, this nigga's gonna kill me. This nigga is mad for real. Can somebody tell him I'm just playing? Hey, Jack. You, yeah. I think you the only one that ever made change. Show, that, show hey, that, the, yeah. You the only one Guinness made world change. Show the world exactly how he built. You yeah. know what I mean? You, yeah, you did. only. You the only one. So you 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 got an award for that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boy, boy. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, bro, hey, listen, listen. It's funny because I'm, I'm. It's like it's funny. This shit happened back in like two, uh, 2016. Yeah. And, but we, we six years later. Yeah. What, what, what is it? Seven years later. Yeah. Seven years later and whatnot. And um, when I see that that footage, because it it come up a lot now. Yeah. It comes up a lot now. Mm-hmm. And when I see that footage mm. of that nigga talking to me like that, I'm. I'm seeing myself, and I'm like, damn, I don't want to be that nigga. <laughs> and I was me. <laughs> and now, I remember my girl, I, the girl at the time, she was she was scared at the house, but she wouldn't stop listening to this me, nigga music. <laughs> she would play the nigga. I'm like, bitch, you want to kill us? We going to kill you, too. If you with me, that nigga say, look at you, look at us. <laughs> Hey. He talking about us. <laughs> he not gonna fuck with you. Turn that shit off. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, it was That's real. True. It, it was, was real. It was Jack. definitely real. And because, like you just said, I ain't never seen a nigga get off like that too. Good. But at that time, I was living in New York. Yes, you were. Yeah, yeah I was living in New York and shit, and I was with Fifty and, and whatnot. And I thought Fifty was gonna have my back about the shit. Mm-mm. And nigga, I, thought, I, I, uh, I I was talking to Fifty about the shit. He was like. Hey man, you better leave that nigga alone. <laughs> yeah, I man. said, hey man, what, man, what happened to G Unit? What? Many men wish death upon us. Hell no. Nah. He, he said, hey man, get get two chains on the phone. Mm-hmm. Like that's what I'm talking about. Get him on the phone. Mm-hmm. He had walked off with the phone. He came back. I was like, so what? What, what did he say? <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm about to do the remix to Riding Around and I'm getting it the next week and shit. I mean, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> hey man, I, I, I felt like I was done for. Hey I, man, I knew I was in trouble. Then. Hey man, God damn Jack, damn. I'm Jack. like I'm never coming back to Atlanta. <laughs> You bet, you bet, you know. Hey, and, hey, and, no. and, and we on the south side right and, now. And we on the south side. Hold yeah, up. Def- definitely, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely. Hey, I done said I was sorry about 17 times already. I'm like, hey, man, nigga, I, 
I'm handicapped. I can't. I don't have a print charge <laughs> to the fullest extent. I'll tell on you. It ain't snitching if you you telling a nigga what a nigga did to you. Yeah. yeah. It ain't snitching if you. It's only snitching when you talking about another nigga. Oh, that what it is. Yeah, because niggas be like, man, you need to go handle that shit yourself and whatnot, and goddamn run down on that nigga. I'm not Batman. <laughs> 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 I'm not kick ass. Yeah. This shit real life. You could die. You gotta let Thanks. some things ride. And the, the nigga so goddamn tall. Yeah. And the nigga reach so long. <laughs> <laughs> I know I can't win. I don't fight. I don't get into fights if I know I can't win the fucking fight. Well, you know, you you, you, you from know, the same you from, you from the same street, man. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, listen. I didn't size it up. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna lose this shit. I'm yeah, gonna you got cop out right now. And like, now you got it. You got it. You got it. Stop. You got it. Stop. <laughs> oh, so you loving your new show? You like man, it? I love this new show, man. Uh, I'm really uh, excited about it and everything. Um, when I heard your, y'all project, you know, like I said, I already knew James was, was uh, talented and everything. And like I said, he been talking about working with you and the hit a finished product. product uh, pro- product and whatnot, and see what y'all did. Mm. Like I'm, 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 I thought it was one or two songs mm. yeah. when you was talking about it, James. Mm. Like how how you get a whole project up out of gear? Shit, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. How, how did we do it? Like like it was just to me, it was just timing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like we was already working together before, so we already had a working relationship. So I said, look, let's just do a little five piece mm-hmm. for the people, and here we go. Yeah, well, but, the, but the, we started working on it like the the, the end of last year, and um, it took us about three or four months. We just was kind of like really slow with the process because Jane was like, "Here go a record right here," then I go work on that, and then he'd be like, "Here go another record right here," <laughs> 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 and then he broke out the one twelve, and I was like, "God damn, where you get sure this from?" Did. And I was like, "Well, damn," he was like, "Shit, we got five songs. I was dropping EP, folks." <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah, that, and that's how it happened. Yeah, it is. It did. It did. It, it, okay, so it's a different side of Gip on here, man, would you say? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and um, wh- what do you call this this version of yourself? Because it's def- very, uh, it's it's not, I'm thinking you're going to be good, good in my Gip on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but th- this is so relaxing. It's so mature. I'm talking to women. Oh. Uh, I haven't, for my whole career, ever talked to women specifically. And I think being with James and giving me the opportunity to speak to women, it gave me a new way to engage the audience. So that's the reason why I think it feels so good and feels so different to everybody because I'm coming from another place that I never discussed before in music besides just one Goody Mob song and that was Beautiful Skin. So and you know that's my favorite, right? Hey. We joke about it on this show all the time <laughs> oh, wow. on the Eighty Five South show. Hello, this is Carlito from a couple of days ago. <laughs> yeah, that's how we. Hey, that's how we, we used to goddamn uh, what I would call him. Carlo. Yeah, that's how I call Carlo. This is, hey, is this Carlito from a couple of days ago? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I swear to God, that's that was our call and response. And he that's tried. Funny. He now he rich and shit. He tried to act like that shit didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's, uh, it's real deal spill. Man, that's that's my shit right there. I think that's the reason why it's coming off so different to everybody, and it's coming off so fresh to everybody. And then James gave me such a musical background to work with, mm. and I and we wasn't under no pressure. We wasn't under A and R's telling us what to do, how to do it, what's hot, what's not hot. You know, it was just about us saying, let's try to change the landscape of music, mm. and the landscape of music at this time is uh, is just it's more machine than uh, than real life mm. so mm. i just think when you listen to our music now uh you can hear that it's it's real it's made by two artists that sit right beside each other and crafted this album so hopefully uh i'm thinking that we we've, we've just did a classic for people who are looking for another alternative in music and that's just to feel music again James, what was your aim? Also, too, just to add on what he just said. Okay. I wanted to show the industry that production still matters as well. Like, you got you got to elaborate on that now. So, 
the biggest take that I've been hearing from this project is the sonics of it and how it sounds. So I'm big on how quality of the sound of the music is. So when I went in and produced all the records, I'm like, well, I need this to be as crispy, clean, polished as possibly can be. Like I was on some Dre shit. Mm -hmm. So I think that's point, part of the reason why people are revering it so high. But also too, like you said, we talking to women, but we also talking about different topics within talking to women, not just one-sided. Mm -hmm. So every song got its own meaning, its own story, and its own identity. So out of control ain't gonna sound nothing like top of the world. Or let you up, let you go ain't gonna sound like nothing like whatever you like. So I think we went into it with just pure intentions and we weren't trying to follow nobody. Like like we just came from the heart with it. Dig, dig, dig. Uh, you know, James, like I think a lot of people finna find uh, you, you was giving me you was giving me a lot of Eddie Kendrick's vibes on this, man. <laughs> it was it like, was feeling that I'll take kind of that. classic. I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, it was feeling that type of classic and whatnot. What's your favorite song on the album? Man, you know, it's hard, always hard to say, man, because, you know, they, they all got different meanings. But I say the, the, the deepest one is Let You Go with 112. And that was the last record that we did on the project. So you had all four of them on there? Well, you know, it's only two of them now. You know, no, Mike and Slim. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got Mike and Slim on it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's still 112. It's still, still 112. 112. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to my boy. Show up. Show up. That's what's up, man. So or, or when you, you talk about the um, the production, mm -hmm. are you a musician, James? I am. What I all am. you play? I play keys. I play guitar. Shit, I play the clarinet. <laughs> <laughs> the clarinet? I do. And so you and Lizzo will have a good time together. Hey man, you you never know. Yeah, I do. I know. I I do it with her. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like Lizzo. She she dope. Me too. Now, yeah. I'm, see, I mean. see, you a nasty motherfucker. <laughs> 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 I just date different now. Yeah, okay. I date different now. What it is? I I I just I just um I just subscribe to the whole thing. What, what what can you do for me? And I see a lot she could do for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Too too many times we be going for quote unquote what's fine, what's popular, whatever that is. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Instead of what's good for us. That's the reason. That's the reason why a lot of relationships don't work. We following what we see people, yeah. other people, do. other people do. And you know, yeah. That's what I do think you like. That's true. That's the culture that we're living in mm -hmm. right now. And I think that's the reason why maybe my interviews have come off so striking to people because it's like I come from an era, man, where nobody wanted to do what the next man did. And it seems like we're living in a world where everybody wants to do it's everything that everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. And people don't even want to be they self no more. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like it's kind of like a. I don't understand it, you know what I mean? I don't understand it, but one thing that, I, uh, that I've always understood is that truth gonna be the illusion every time in the long run. And all I can do is say, if you can listen from, if you can go back and check the things that I've rapped about or talked about, I ain't never led you wrong and I ain't never brought you no lies. So for me personally, all I can do is continue to do the things that has kept me solid over this time. Show no. Yeah. That's it. Show no. You know, and that's being me and being Atlanta and being the South. We don't bow our heads to nobody. Money ain't nothing because Atlanta always had money. That's right. So if that's your tool of, of controlling people, I'm going to shoot that down too. Mm. It's about really what you come from, how you was raised. Some people might have money, but they've been taught by the devil how to control people with it. Mm. So I'm just a person that ain't gonna never be under their control. I never had a publishing deal. So control is something that I always fight against. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't matter. M to me, I look at it like this. When you're an artist and your music is taking you around the world, you won. Because I got people that I graduated high school with that ain't left Atlanta since we left high school. Mm. So when you think about just the life that I've led and the life that they led, they worked for somebody, I created my life. So 
I'm just trying to show people where art will always beat the machine in the long run. So love this before you love the money because loving the art form is what's gonna make you last in it, mm. not the money. Scripture. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You definitely come off like you love the the art and everything. And and you know another thing that you don't get a lot of credit for, bro. You you I don't, you don't get no credit for is your style. Like you've been <laughs> eclectic before. Eclectic was eclectic. <laughs> like what what are you are you been uh, uh, uh um you know on futuristic? Yeah. Uh, uh been a been a uh, uh, uh I want I don't know if I want to use this word, but. Uh, you tell me if you cool with it. Fashionista. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay. All I mean, right, cool. Got him fashionista just means that I don't want to buy off the rack, baby. I'm going to go to the fa I'm going to go to the thread store. You know what I mean? I don't I, I mean my player is that how you say you a player when I bought your outfit yesterday. A player you ain't supposed to have now he got on. It ain't my fault even if I got to get it off the internet. You won't have it. <laughs> <laughs> Say so, that, Gippy. So I just don't understand. You know what I mean? I'm not with the get along game. Mm -hmm. And right now, the industry look like the get along game. They yeah. following whoever got down got the money. They they lining up like prostitutes on, on Stewart Avenue. Mm -hmm. Never me. I, I I keep telling my homeboy, <laughs> hey, bro, that's a purse. Hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, bro. You can't, you can't put all that in your wallet. You can't put all that shit in your wallet, my boy. Hey. He said, I got my gun in here. Nigga, get you a holster. Hey. Man, you ain't, you ain't feeling no fanny packs, man? You know mm. new fanny packs? I, I had a fanny pack when I was 10, and I, I felt crazy with it. Hey, only See, reason was, I was yeah, done I, after that. You know why I felt crazy with it? Because somebody stole my fanny pack right <laughs> off. I got robbed for my fanny pack. Damn. And then, mm -hmm. like, hey, hey, then when the nigga did it, that's when I realized it was a fanny pack. Because mm -hmm. they were like, hey, nigga, give me your motherfucking fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, after he hey. took it, I was like, I'm glad I ain't got a fanny pack no more. And all I had was candy in it. <laughs> all I hey. had was candy. It was, it was like $3 in there. Mm -hmm. my, my allowance mm -hmm. was hey. I never got no other shit like that again. Hey, well, I'm glad you did. Yeah, yeah, never got no goddamn. But I can't tell my homeboy. He got the got the Ferragamo shit, the F's on the shit going down, yeah. all of that. And he like, nigga, do you know what this is? I said, get yeah, a purse, nigga. That's <laughs> you know, a fucking you, purse. You know what's so funny about? Yeah. Those, what the the, the the greatest trick is? Yeah. All they got to do is put an emblem on something, and you think you, it makes you more valuable. Mm -hmm. And. I've always felt like, what about an emblem gives you self-worth? Bruh, you, you talking that shit now? You know what I mean? What mm -hmm. about it? Because if you take the emblem off, it's still the same shoe. Bruh, I seen a girl with a big Chanel thing on it. I thought her name was Chanel. <laughs> <laughs> her name was not Chanel. It's, fun, it, it's funny, man. It's like, uh, especially the early years of hip hop, man, going to the flea market, getting your 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 clothes tie dye, getting your name on it just to go to the to the to the to the to what we'll go to the what the talent shows. That's how Atlanta was. Mm -hmm. It was about us going Friday nights after high school and going to talent shows and watching people dance, mm -hmm. you know, and express themselves through art. Mm -hmm. And um it was all about being an individual. Mm -hmm. And um if you look at everything about society right now, it's 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 a place of hurting people into one direction, whether you believe it or not. And uh, I think that's the most powerful thing about music is that you can always go against something that's wrong if you know how to write it, the right song. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a lot of times you don't have to be a uh, Malcolm X. Sometimes you could just use the sweet words of King and you could change everything around you. Mm. That's it. I can dig it. I can dig it. Yo, uh, James, how would you describe your style, man? What, what, what was you going for when you you found yourself? My style? Uh, I mean, I've just always been a kind of a fly, nerdy kind of type early on. And then as I transitioned, I was just more of a fly player kind of type dude. You know what I mean? Like, um, 
ain't never tried to be like nobody else. Like, I always just had my own thing. Like, just like Giffy Hayes' own style. Like, I always been that way since I got into the industry. It was just a thing of, like, um, how do I present it to the world? You know what I mean? And that's that's what I was always focusing on for the past, you know, probably eight years, you know, focusing on that. So, I always, to me, I always been a leader. Like, you know, I'm an Aries, and my birthday just passed. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So, happy birthday, man! When your birthday you, was? March 28. March 28. March 28. Yes, sir. Up. Yes, sir. So you know, we leaders, man. You know, like mm-hmm. we we don't we don't we don't let nobody decide what we gonna do. You know, we gonna go after it one way or the other. Mm. Yeah. How do you feel like the the state of music is? This is for both of y'all. Mm. The state of music is what it is. Yeah. I would say this: uh, for the kids to be making so much money off of what they're doing, is great. But for them not to have the education to keep it, is where we're going wrong. Mm. Um. The subjects that we rap about, are they subjects that's gonna last forever or are they subjects that's gonna last for the moment? It, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's for the moment. You know, so well, well if, you, if you say for the moment, then we just did a version of disco all over again. Because mm-hmm. right now, if artists can't talk about nothing but opping and shooting and this, that, and it ain't got no real love or expression in it, then, um, all you're doing is killing the art form. Money is money gonna come. Um, what's great about it is just watching the emergence of so many stars from Atlanta. That's my thing. You yeah. know. Yeah. The yeah. the the emergent, having future, having little baby, having two chains, um, having amigos, having just having so many of them just come out and become worldwide stars. Mm-hmm. That's what I love about it because it just keeps us uh, strong as a city. And I will say this: I mean, Atlanta is the only city outside of New York that got a millionaire er- on every side of it just through music. Mm-hmm. So that's something that we didn't have when we started. It was just us. It was JD, and it was Dallas. So for mm-hmm. us three to be able to sit back and, you know watch Atlanta turn into what it's turning to, that's the greatest thing about music. But what do I feel about it when it comes to the 360 deals of being able to put artists into enslavement contracts? That's the part I don't agree with. Money, you do, it's not enough money an executive can give me because the executive don't own the, the company. So the executive can give me money and then tomorrow he fired. Now I get share. The money they gave me don't matter. They could just write it off. Mm-hmm. But they still own me because I signed that contract. Mm-hmm. So you got to deal with a lot more than what you had to deal with when I first came into the industry. They figured out more ways to hand shack, hand to, to to shackle the artist to the label. Yes, people can invest in you for you to run, but for somebody to invest in you and say that now they're a part of your life forever. That's a new form of slavery I just can't get with. Mm. Mm. Wow, wow. And you know they could actually take the money back that they gave you now. Now. What, hold on, yeah. what do you mean when you say take the money back? Cause you know, it, it, like I can, you can you can turn my cable off and whatnot, but you, that, that, uh, that last month that I had owed y'all for it, you, you still gotta come mm-hmm. get that. So uh, like so when so I what moved is, back here, I ain't realized I was fifteen hundred in the hole for the last ten years with Comcast. Right, it's right. still there. Yeah, but yeah. See, but they, see, they wouldn't let me turn it back on until I had. Them. You got right, right. <laughs> You still got to look that that <laughs> right now. What it, what they saying is that what James is saying they can take the money back. So now, now the young artists, if I give you three to six million dollars, I could put a life insurance on you. And now, if something happens to you, now I can retract for having to pay whoever the rest of your contract. And another way is, I might have signed you for a hot single three, four months down the line. I didn't think we is hot. Why don't you just give me that money back, y'all? And you have a nightlife. 
See, that's mm -hmm. so now they can get in business with you and they got the option to get out with you, but you never had the option to get out of business with them. So just understand yep. what you're getting into. And we as OGs, if we gonna sit around here and help the industry rape our young, because if we think about it now, it used to be a rock and world, a rock and roll world. It was Kiss, it was, it was Foreigner, it was everything else. But now it's a hip hop world. So now are we as black executives, we know the game. We know they buying our children up for cheap. Are we gonna keep giving them to the system? Or are we gonna teach them at least money management once they get the money? If you're gonna get three, four couple of million in, Charlie, before we go buy jewelry, before we go buy car, we're going to buy a business that makes money every day. Even if it's just got there a, a wing stop, that thing gonna make money every day. Chicken gonna sell when, when the, when the cotton won't, you know yeah, what I mean? So, yeah. so you gotta understand if we gonna do different things like that to set our children up with at least these, this, cause a child having millions of dollars, bro, he gonna wreck. He gonna wreck. I I been there. He gonna wreck. If you never had it, you gonna wreck. <laughs> I'm gonna be up mm -hmm. in Burlington buying everything. Shit, you don't need. I'm talking about winter clothes in the summer. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. We just stupid. Yeah. So that's the reason why I say, man, the game right now, so much money to be made, but your career is so much shorter. Mm -hmm. So just understand what you're doing it for and how you're doing it and what you want out of it. Because if you're not trying to be like, if your life ain't dedicated to being an artist, then the money just gonna just help you crash faster. Yes, sir. Okay, let, let me ask you this, Gil. Man, when you first got that money, <laughs> what, what was that? What I was it the wildest up, thing I, you burnt it on? It wasn't no wild thing. Good and Mars signed first contract, $20,000, 5000 each. I spent half of it at Greenbrier Flea Market and the other half on a Cadillac. I had to get my, I had to get that goddamn candy on there, shower. Had to get that goddamn, <laughs> boy, I got that candy, then I got them reverse ace on that hoe. Boy, stop, I'm ready. <laughs> 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 I'm ready, I was done. I was, I was look good, but I was bad broke. Shit, fuck it. Like, dang. I was ready to work then. Let's go ahead and do get up, get out and get something. <laughs> <laughs> my verse ready. <laughs> so it was like, oh, that man. was the greatest thing. But when people ask us, about our thing, we signed our first contracts. Come on, man, we burnt that thing in Green, bro, at Foot Locker, man, at the, at the paint shop on Camelton, and shit. When they got went to Eddie Gold, went here and got and got my yeah. Eddie Gold right, and yeah. shit. We were back, got down about a hundred fluff. <laughs> 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 little gas money left. It was over with. You know, it was time to get back to work. But yeah. that's what made recording Soul Food so great. Yeah. Yeah. Because he just gave her just a little bit to show her what the game was, and then it was like, get back to work, y'all. So we recorded Soul Food on Camelton Road at Curtis Mayfield House, behind the get church. Get out of here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We performed it, you know. What people don't know is Hank Aaron owned all the, all the churches on the south side. Southwest side, that's Hank Aaron. Church of Chicken. Church of Chicken, that's Hank Aaron. Fuck. Forever and day. You ever bought yeah, church of chicken on the south side? Mm -hmm. That was Hank Aaron. With them big ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, look. With them big ass wings. Them look. Like baby I'm talking about, look. Look. Don't talk about it now. Popeye's serving that baby chicken. Yeah. Look, yeah. I, I want that fat chicken. Give me that. I don't want that baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it, recording his. That's when Reek then was like, yo, bro, we ain't recording at the dungeon. Well, we, well, we never could record at the dungeon. That's what people don't understand. Either. Yeah, tell me about that. We Did never I could record in Lakewood. Lakewood was our first thing. All we could do was listen to a beat for two weeks straight and hopefully your rap make it on the song. Gotcha. That's how Reek them, that's how we always knew it was a hit record because Reek would let it run in the dungeon for a whole week mm. just to see if anybody was like, nah, that ain't it. But like stuff like, ain't no thing but a chicken wing. Like that beat, boom, noon, noon. That shit was in the dungeon for a whole week there before we even put lyrics on it. You know, all that kind of stuff was just training us to be right once he said, come on, let's go down to Doppler. Then we get down to Doppler. Now most of the time, Goody Ma might be outside in the parking lot the whole day. We couldn't go in there. You know, back then, studios, you couldn't just walk in studios like you do it now. Like, studios was prestigious. That was like walking in college. 
You could only go up in there if you had some time or you wouldn't make it past the lobby. So that Doppler, and then once we started recording the last of the album at Boss Town. So that's when we started going up in the, what was Boss Town, which is now Stankonia. Oh, wow. That, that's when we started mm -hmm. really learning what Goody Mob could do because that's when Reed called. They did call it a while with Cujo and Timo. Then the night, that's when they called us, me and Charlotte to the studio. And uh, Reek was like, man, here go the beef for get up, get out, get some. You up, CeeLo. And Lo went in there and he dropped two verses. And and Reek was like, KP was in there too. And Reek, he did two verses. And then Reek was like, okay, what the other verse you did? I don't recall. Ever do that one. And now he was like, shit, Gil, break. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to the front in the foyer. He like, Gip it. Man, man, that verse here, man, that was my song, man, my song. I said, hello, man, do your best. Because if you do your best, you'll get another chance to do another song. Mm -hmm. And he went in there and did get up, get out, get some. Damn, man. That I, I play that every morning in the gym. Mm. I mean, that song that really helped us at a time, bro. Like, it was it was a uh, it was difficult not knowing if people were gonna understand. First of all, our dialect was just so strange. Yeah, then. yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, and you know, if you think about just listening to Goody Mob, that's why we them never condensed our verses like how they did on Outkast, made them re real, real song. If you look and listen to Goody Ma, he might have let Joe rap 23 bars, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. he, it was no, yo, bruh, don't do that, don't do that, because we were peers. So it was more about them letting us do what we do and them really producing Outkast. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why Outkast is just so precise from hooks to how, was, how long the song is, because we wanted to make sure that they was clear. But for Goody Mob, we wanted to show you the other side of Atlanta. Like, mm. nah, this mm. the other part. Mm. Like, this the part that we live on. And I think if you listen to Soul Food, it laid out our culture to people. When Outkast gave you our culture in another way, we brought it back down and gave you the other side of the Cadillac culture. Showing up. We gave you our life and how we live, what we thought about as far as grandmama, how we thought about as far as our mothers, them, what we thought about them thinking about us being in the street, getting in trouble. That's why you got guess who? Like showing people that, man, we got in trouble a lot, man. Like Atlanta was so different then, bro. Like we got a kick out of going down to Peachtree Piedmont Park and finding Doug High School and fighting Doug in the park here. Without the things we did. Right, Amazed right, right. against Doug, we fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the things we did. And then again, I was a little different because I came from East Point. I got kicked out of East Point in ninth grade. You know, so I went to Atlanta. So that's when I met Cujo. That's when I met Timo, you know. And I knew Low, but Low, he three years younger than us. So Lo, my brother age, so Lo cousin floated. That's how I met CeeLo, cause one night he, they came over to my house to buy some weed, you know what I mean? You know, I'm working the back though, you know what I mean? So they come, they get them and some weed, and my, they were like, yo man, my cousin wanna meet your chicken head. And that's the first time I met Lo. Mm. Chicken <laughs> head. And, and then right off, y'all didn't just throw him in the group like No, that. cause this was like years before. And you guys are the Lumberjacks at this time, right? No. Cujo and Timo are the Lumberjack. Gip in the East Point chain gang. Gotcha. With 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 Cool Breeze and Cap One. Cap Get One. the fuck out of yeah. here. You and you and Cool Breeze was in a in a, in group, a group together. Yeah, me it was East Point chain gang. So it me, Cool Breeze, Cap One, that's Southside Daddy, the producer. Okay. All right. Mm. Then a dude named O. Z. And that was and it was another dude named Chieftain. You heard him on um uh um our second album, Still Standing. Mm. So for me personally, we came from a different situation. The first time, me and Cujo always kind of been together. We street partners, you know what I mean, since mm. high school. So, you know, I, when we was doing this, at the same time, Gippy going to hair school on Washington Road. I'm in, what, down there by the churches. So I'm down in the corner in the, 
Piggly Wiggly thing doing doing hell. I was doing that too. Yeah, I be, I be telling people like in Atlanta, yeah. it was a player to be to, to, to tell them again. To, to, it was a player to do hell. Like Man, them hoes like, ran me up out that school. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, I was trying to fuck everybody in that motherfucker. Yeah, you know I'm yeah. I, mean, I got Man, up I in there. I know that Jack you did hell. Yeah. All I know how to do is, is washing sets and finger waves, though. Yeah, that and, would be true. I, 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 I ain't right learned there. shit trying. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, trying to get at the girls. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So that, that's the thing people don't understand that Atlanta was such a big hair town. Yeah, it was. Like, this was Bonner Brothers. Did You seen players. Everybody would have kind of like, you would see actual men in their own salons. So in my mind, I was thinking like, shit, shawty, this rap don't work. They're gonna get me a hair salon. I'm a nickname myself Shampoo. Yeah. And we about to get there and go to work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shampoo. Like that. You know what I mean? Cause mm -hmm. I would think, cause during the eighties, the early eighties, all my aunties in the in the in the country down in Rockmore, Georgia, they all got into doing curls and all that. They all practicing all the kids. We all got curls. So I come back to the city and then you're like, man, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so so beauticians and just the hair salon business has always been in my family and I just feel like if I didn't rap man I'd probably have five six salons and just do women hair all the time man by appointment yeah yeah mm -hmm. hey bro the, it's the lick because my, my sister she <laughs> owns she owned a, own, a, a, a salon in Riverdale and I used to go go to her salon and I'd work for her on the weekends. And I would watch these grown women here and whatnot. And they, they, they'll be like, goddamn, making passes at me. And I'll be freaking some of them and shit. Yeah. And my sister's like, if you want to meet women, you need to go to high school. So I had to join this high school that were right next door to Flavors. Yes, sir. Right next door to Flavors and everything. And I walked up in that bitch. I was like, what the fuck? And I was the only real nigga in there. Oh yeah, it's all yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. one other dude. He was pretending, but then yeah. I knew, saw right through his jive ass like glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a track star. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big Jack. Mm -hmm. That's the greatest thing about just Atlanta, the culture. And that, and I tell people all the time, man, like, you know, I know people that's just as evil. They come out of houses. It's people that come out the project. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the illusion of Atlanta, mm -hmm. you know. And then the, you know the illusion is too that just because you come from a good family, you won't do nothing. You won't do nothing. You won't put something down, and that's an illusion too. Yeah. Most of most of the gangsters I knew, man, came from real good families, man, back then. But shit, yeah. You know the, the illusion that, and and and, the, and guess the allure of the streets back then was just so strong. Cause mm -hmm. I tell people you. you you started just seeing so many kids have money that you know didn't come from where you came from, and you just like, how they got money? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and I tell people, I'm like, bro, do you understand? I used to live in the world without a crackhead. I didn't know, you know, it wasn't no crackheads. And nah, then all of a sudden, it was crackheads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the time I got to Dixie Hill, it mm -hmm. was crackhead. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm just looking at the things that are, uh, that's been able to keep us as a city together has just always been that we come from the city of King, man, and we gotta represent it that way. And that's the reason why Goody Mob always was speaking on how we how we was raised, because that really made us different than everybody else in the industry. Mm -hmm. Just simply because we had respect for the leaders that came before us. And, you know, it's different in other cities. You know, when you go to LA, Man, they hold gangbangers up like King, you know what I mean? Like Tukey Wickham, he, he like Martin Luther King to them, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like you go to New York, it's, it's the it's the kingpins from Harlem, you mm -hmm. know, Nicky Barnes and all that. And mm -hmm. I was just like, bro, that's the difference between us. That's why we got in the room with different people and never thought of like, Cause it was like, hey man, what you think and how you think and your heroes and our heroes, they just different, cuz. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it, it's not that I don't respect the way you do it, it just that I just been taught it's another way. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think in we definitely didn't do that. Yeah, bro. We de we definitely did not do that. You know, I can't think of no no Atlanta no drug king no king, king outside yeah, no B B BMF no uh, no no. Man, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So just the way we were raised and the thing that we was taught to respect 
just be so different than other cities, man. And mm. I just be like, damn, bro, like you really grew up like this, thinking and 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 having to live life in this type of environment. And then for all these goddamn grown people to be sitting around here backing this shit, mm. it makes you really look at how fucked up some people had to you know the situation some people will put in mm. because some people do come up out of them situations and get away from it but then when you go around it and, and you be like well look how many people died look how many people died in the gang situations drug situations all that but at the same time too we we haven't once just said is this the way of life that we want mm. and for people to still be doing it knowing the tragedy of it is like people don't understand the eighties and the nineties. We didn't know what this shit looked like on the other side mm -hmm. of it. It was just the lure of every room getting bigger and bigger, mm -hmm. and us getting invited to the party. But then, on the other side of it, you get to see the tragedy of it. You know, it's all good when everybody balling, but it's all bad when shit go left. You mm -hmm. know, so you know, as much as I can say, hey man. I remember when BMF hit the town. I remember when they were just standing around at the bad boy and organized noise weekend and just looking and watching. How they doing it? How they moving? How Atlanta nigga move? Shit, they watched us. We were the first niggas hit the club with 100 people. Mm. They watched us do that. <laughs> they ain't do that. We did. Dungeon Valley. Mm. You know what I mean? So a lot of things that BMF took up on, took a, they, 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 they gravitated to, it was watching the Dungeon Family and how we, mess with our people and Meach took that and he did the same and that's why they became so big that shit pissed me off though where they did them strip club gave all them hoes all that money man and had them riding in Lamborghinis and all that shit <laughs> I come up in there with my hot $32 none of them <laughs> they what? fucked the strip club if you was a regular broke nigga yeah. you was not getting no Stripper coochie. Yeah. They, when they, BMF was in that Yeah, bit. they knocked y'all all the way down. Y'all the the down there on full and industrial wet. What are you doing so, here? <laughs> at, yeah, we was at Babes. Y'all at Babes, Dirty yeah, Rats. They yeah, Dirty yeah. Rats, Babes, all yeah. that. They down there. They, they on the full floor. Yeah. yeah. And, Pete, yeah. and see, the, the, but see, just, it was just, you didn't even want to go in the club where they was at. No, you didn't want to do that. It was like, and then. Because I'm was, not going to do, I, I'm not, I know I, I can't do this. I, I, I can't do this. I can't do this. When did we do this? I got to pay my rent. <laughs> you know, I I mean, me first going into the clubs, man, first person took me in the club, bro, in Magic City. I probably was 15, 16 years old. <laughs> I'm in there with my OG. I talk about him on uh on Dirty South. Mm. Scatamac. Okay. Milwaukee players. It's showing up. They used to be sitting up in Magic City with diamond bow ties on. See diamond that? bow ties. Mm. Yeah. They used to wear diamond bow ties over their t-shirts. That's how you knew the Milwaukee crew. See, it was it was it was so player and so individual. You you saw all the flash and everybody flash was different back then. It was nobody wanting to have the same jewelry on nothing, and and that was the real culture of just that time watching Magic City. Mm -hmm. And first time I seen Deion Sanders in the club, like like. First time I seen you talking that shit, man. rising like De Deion Sanders and rising, yeah, and, and, yeah, rising. yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they was a the sight. Too to legit. See. They, 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 what do you call it? The too legit team at yeah, the time. Yeah, they was they, they, they was a sight to see to see what to see Deion Sanders in Magic City. He might have on an all red silk outfit with the silk sock, the Gators red. And might have a red poncho over that motherfucker. And might have a neck full of gold with standing there with the block phone. I'm talking about he looked like what? He was out the movies. <laughs> Bro. And, and he played ball, but yeah. he looked like a straight D boy. Yeah, like he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Ain't nobody do it like Deion Sanders, bro. So, nobody did it like Deion. So just to be in that Atlanta culture then, and that was also when it was just ballers in the club. And a lot of D-boys then dressed like business people. Mm -hmm. Like they had suits on a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And that's when the baseball culture, the day just, they were still in that's right. the strip clubs. Yeah. You know, where he met Holly Berry. Holly Berry. Yeah. <laughs> Holly Berry. <laughs> Holly Berry. Yeah, yeah, man. 
<laughs> That's how who, who you think brought on the top? Huh? Okay. That way. That okay. way. <laughs> okay. She wanted to come see it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know me? So and, and I, I forgot all about that shit. Yeah. They were just the way. Yeah. God damn. Yeah, King. Hey, dog. No, nothing went fucking with Atlanta. And then we ain't even get the freak nigga yet. Yeah, uh, yeah, we didn't even have Ooh. we didn't even have to get the freak nigga because you still had the AU off the chain. The AU was off the chain. The AU was like a party. It was like you had Mar Brown, you had all that, and at that time, we as kids, even if we were trying to mess with the streets, we still went to school for mom and dad that they asked us to. We tried. Try know, some of us try. We're gonna give them that first year, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we might slide to the left. <laughs> but, but they can't say we're we three times. They, they can't say we ain't tried, yeah. You know, so a lot of my homeboy they tried, you sure know what enough. I mean. But the streets were just too strong, yeah. Sure you enough. know, it was too close to uh, too close to that west side, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That west side, yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, for me and for us, and for me to be in this situation, especially right now, to and live through so many eras in Atlanta, and to be right here with James and be like, damn, man, have we opened up another portal and and another space in music that hadn't that that's new and fresh to this generation, whereas maybe more music like this, we could turn around the songs and the substance of the songs. And I think that's what's gonna kind of like curve a lot of the killing. See, people don't understand that when Outkast and Goody Mob came, the killing came down in the street. That's right. Came down in the street. So I know that it's the content. I live through it. Mm, mm. I'm, I'm gonna drink to that. Yo, Chris, can I? <laughs> yeah, let me get one. Y'all wanna drink? Yeah, you, yeah, 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 let's do it. You got some water? Oh, we, we do have water. Yeah. Some H2O. We definitely got water. <laughs> yeah. You want water too? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. what I'm talking about, Thank man. You. More liquor. Thank you look you. so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> sure I don't want to do what they're doing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about being different. You got to dare to be different. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, Gil, mm-hmm. you know, talk about the uh, the the uh the, this cannabis vinegar. I remember you were first telling me about this when I was just I was te- I had just visited home mm-hmm. and I was about to move back here mm-hmm. and this was in 2021. Yeah, um, 2018. Man, my father told me he said, "Man, I'm only gonna be here eight more months." So I came back from LA. That's what your dad told you, bro. Mm-hmm. And um, how that hit. Man, Pop was just a strong kind of dude. And his thing was, ain't nothing that's going on with me got nothing to do with you. And why would I put the stress of what's going on with me on you? So he was the kind of person where I live with you, teach you what you need to lead, what you need to know before I leave. And that's what he did. So he just equipped me with everything I needed once he left in the eight months. And during the eight months, I started trying to bring him THC products from uh, LA, because I was living in LA at the time. And uh, you know, and I was about to come out with my own cannabis brand, Gift Goodies, and I had been working on it. But when he told me that, I said, well shit, let me shut down shop and go home. When I got home, he couldn't really mess with the TAC stuff because it was kind of like, uh, it was too strong for him. The only thing that really helped him was uh, when I brought him back some pace. Once he went into the hospital, um, he couldn't eat. A lot of the, a lot of the uh, people on his uh, floor had died and he was the last one left and I flew back. He was in the hospital? Yeah, oh. and um, I gave him some cannabis, man. And um, the old, the the OR the, the it's like this oil that's like for cannabis they can bag it all the way out. I gave him some. He woke up in the morning. He wanted to eat. He went back home. He stayed alive for another two weeks. And uh, then he left me. But during that time, I just lo- started learning the health benefits of CBD. And then I started understanding why it's not pushed to the black community. 
because it's healthy. And everything about it is what they use to make other kind of drugs. And at the end of the day, when you're doing CBD, there's no toxins in it. It's clean as you can get. I have like 45 kind of like products. I got vapes. 45. Yeah, topicals. Uh, topicals. Creams. What's topicals are like creams, pain creams. Okay, got it. Instead of taking opioids, got creams that got a thousand milligrams that would take away the pain just as much as a, a pill will with just topicals, which means it's a lotion. So with topicals, and we also have, we just started a non alcoholic brand called Zaga. Well, we went into the liquor store. And we mocktailed every type of alcohol that you can buy. We took the alcohol out and we infused it with cannabis. Now, what do you get out of this? The alcohol, the older you get, it's destroying you from the inside out. You know how to do that, right? There. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> but with, with us taking the alcohol out, now your body is being infused with cannabis which now it becomes as a, a toxic, a way of cleaning out your body of all toxins, mm. okay? So now with that being said, we got tequila, vodka, bourbon, pina colada, uh, what, uh, shit, margarita, everything that you could buy. And now for this, it's a new culture called smoking drinking. So now instead of smoking your weed, you can drink your weed and it's going to taste just like your favorite alcohol. So every Wednesday on Edgewood, y'all can come down there. We got an actual mixologist, and any kind of drink you can get in a normal club or at a normal bar, you can get it made with this, and then you will see the actual different effects from it. And mm -hmm. you, we've already tested it in Vegas. We took the actual alcohol out and put this in, and after two drinks, they didn't know they wouldn't drink alcohol because we do it with a sativa. So when you, after two drinks, you up, you up like, you, it feels like being on MDMA. Zaga. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hold on, hey, hold on. <laughs> What's MDMA? Huh? Everybody know about MDMA huh? but me. What, what? What's MDMA? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The X makes the sex spectacular. Oh, got oh, you. Hold up. Got you. Okay. Yeah. And ain't going to do nothing but spice up the night, then you just going to go to sleep. Okay. <laughs> I ain't, ain't going to have no psychedelic shit going no, on. No, uh-uh. You just going to have a tremendous body high that's going to make you want to talk to something. Hold up. I, I, I want to do that. I want to do that. Yeah, I man. That. I want to do that. Hey, man, you're going to love it, man. And it's clean. You ain't going to do nothing but go to sleep. You're going to wake up, feel good, like you didn't smoke 20 blunt, and you you ready to go. You ready to get something to eat. Only thing you're going to do is wake up. I'm not a smoker. I, I would like to do that. Oh, you're going to love mean. this. You're going to love this because you're going to find another alternative to alcohol because what you can do, your own study. Take what you like in real alcohol. And I'm gonna give you the version in the mocktail, and you're gonna see which one gonna make you feel totally different. But you're gonna get, get the same here. taste. So whatever I like in alcohol. Yes. So if I what's that brown right there? Was it right here? Uh huh. Did do say? I got that too. That ain't number kind yet. Yeah. That ain't number okay. kind yet with a fancy name. <laughs> 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 what about it for, for the champagne drinkers for celebration? Well, champagne is kind of a different situation with champagne simply because you got that fizz in there. Yeah. So a lot of times it's hard for us to mix it okay. as, a, as, as, as a base. Okay. And then put that bubbly in there, then put the weed in It's too in early. There. We'll, it's, they'll get there later. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, we're going to get there later. But gotcha. just being able to do this, like, um, we are expanding to five or six states this month, and we're in, already in about nine nine states. So me personally, it just gave me another place to take and put my energy, whereas, again, with music, I only did it to help people. And with this company here, I'm doing it to help people. This is so innovative, man. I, I've never heard this before. <laughs> I ain't never heard nobody talk about this. You oh yeah, we got we got a we got a top of the world drink. 
a top we, of the world. Yeah, drink. we have an actual top of the world. I want to be on top of the world. It's coming out. Okay. It's gonna have uh, that will be. Uh, I think I'm doing that like in a pineapple Malibu. So mm -hmm. it's like kind of a pineapple Malibu. And then James Worthy has his own drink with his own face on there called the James Worthy, and that's a tequila sunrise. Yes. That's what's up, man. That's <laughs> hey, you, hey, you know, James. Whenever I told everybody you would come here, they thought you played basketball. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm like, I'm wait sure. a minute. Y is you related to Buddy? Mm. Nah. nah. You, you have you been getting that most of your life? Uh, here and there. Here and I can dig it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's all good. You look, look. I, I'd rather be compared to greatness. Did you did. One hundred percent, man. Hey, I got my guy. You know, Wizard Craig over here. Uh, AKA uh, mm -hmm. DJ I am somebody. Hey, <laughs> you know, uh, yo, he had a couple of questions for y'all. Okay, say some facts. Yeah, man. So, I know uh, James. I know you're working with legends. You know, what I'm saying working mm -hmm. with Robin Ness. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying Houdini, PM Dawn. Yeah. So, like working with this like project, did you kind of have that same idea? Like I'm working with a legend. You know, what I'm saying. Um. Yeah, but you know, past that, like I just love people that work like me and got the same work ethic and, and the same um, outlook on music as me. Like, I never got into the business for money. Like, I did it because I loved it. And this is just another project kind of displaying that. Like, we ain't had no ego involved, nothing like that. Like, we both got a respect for each other. So I think, you know, what y'all hear is a derivative of that. Mm. You got something else, man, with? And then Gip, man, you know, working with Daz, you know what I'm saying, and working with Ali, you know, like, mm -hmm. how would you feel, do you feel like that's the future of, like, hip-hop, you know what I'm saying, coming up with, like, these, like, pairings, you know what I'm saying, you got JD with Currency, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, you got y'all, so, like, mm -hmm. you feel like that's, like, the future with hip-hop, hip-hop and R&B? I think if you look at it what right now, I think that, uh, that's the new way to be able to keep both audience pleased. I think hip hop and R&B is really why hip hop is so big right now because it had hip hop, I mean R&B at one time. And it's flipped where it's like rapping R&B. But with our project, we've gone back to the natural order of R&B and hip hop. And I think that's the reason why James is so out front. James is so, he's bringing the, what R&B should sound like and how it can sound in this new age. So me being where I am, I had to learn how to elevate and at the same time write from a new space. And I think we, uh, from having those two situations come together, yes, this is a place where artists can now, instead of it being a distance between age, now we both can teach each other and just sitting down and doing music together. So yes, I think it's the future. Uh, it, because all we're doing is teaching each other what's new. He's teaching me what's new in his in his generation, and I'm showing him what he may have not learned in my life. So it's gonna make the music better because it's gonna make both of us want to do our best when we sit down and do music. So uh, James, yeah, when you heard Puppy say. Um, R&B is dead. What was going through your mind? He crazy. That's exactly how I felt because, you know, no disrespect to Puff, but, you know, he think like a lot of other people, like they don't really do their due diligence to understand what's out there and what's really relevant. Like, I think they just focus on what's mostly put in front of you at a, at a mass rate, and they go off of that to say, well, that's what it is, and if it ain't that, then – the art form is dead. And like with me and a lot of other my peers, like it's always been there. It's just that we sometimes get the short end of the stick because we don't, we don't, most R&B acts don't get major radio play. Like we limited to urban AC and mm. then that's it. Like mm. we ain't getting on pop. We ain't, we ain't getting rotation over overseas and in Europe and stuff like that. Like. So it's always going to be diminished. So I think, you know, people like Puff, they always going to say that because, again, he ain't controlling it either. Do you like where R&B is right now? I do. I do. Like, I like where music is at actually right now because it's, it's more competitive and creative than it's ever been because there's no boundaries. Like, 
the ceiling is so high, like you can infuse anything in music now mm -hmm. and be creative. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's that's where I live at right now is just being creative as possible. Like with, with Gip and Worthy, like there's so many moving parts in the production of them songs. Like it's hard to even, you know, classify what some of it is. It's just feel good music. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So I, I think nowadays, like, people need to stop kind of putting stuff in a category. Like, let's let's just enjoy the art. Okay. Well, give me your top five classic R&B um, singers and give me your top five uh, new age R&B singers. That who you listen to? One the guys of today. One uh, let me see. Um... Are you familiar with Black? Yeah, like of Black. course. I, I, like thought, Black. I thought his name was uh, Six, Six Lack at first. <laughs> Everybody I, I, call him that. I didn't know who that he was. That was a B. It was, I thought it was. Come on, man, don't disrespect that I man. I thought it was like a that. Six and whatnot. I, yeah, yeah, Six he's Lack. trying to be clever. Like, man. see who is Six Lack? <laughs> oh, you no. know, I'm old nigga. I'm 40. I'm 40. Come on, Jack. Come I'm 40. On. You know, I'm 40. Come on. Yeah, I, I came up in a time where niggas just had regular letters filling their names. <laughs> so how you felt with with how six nines fill his name? How you? How you? <laughs> All right. this, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about six nine. I had the, uh, the the I'm gonna say pleasure. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say pleasure. But Be before all that other stuff had happened mm -hmm. with the, the snitching thing mm -hmm. and whatnot, he's a nice guy. But I ain't gonna even front. Once again, I was still an old nigga when he came out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember uh, his uh, manager was it, like ran me down, the, the guy that he had put in jail, mm -hmm. the shoddy dude, mm -hmm. and he put him on FaceTime and I was supposed to know him. <laughs> and you were like, nah. I was supposed to know him. And you were like, nah, I don't know him. <laughs> yeah, look at Rambo had all this shit. I, I don't, I wasn't, it wasn't registering. You weren't ready. I wasn't ready <laughs> to accept this as our king. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and so, <laughs> You know, we was on FaceTime and everything. We were like, yeah, OG. I'm like, OG, nigga, I'm 34. <laughs> oh, 35, one of them. At the time. <laughs> you know, yeah, he he was just uh he was a really nice guy. He was very respectable and real cool and stuff, but I d I, I didn't understand the spelling of it either because I didn't know what he was and what that, that, that moment in time was when the music started to shift again. Yeah. Cause like even I, uh, even when um the Soldier Boy came out, I was six. I was Superman in the Soldier Boy video. I, I remember. Yeah, I, I I didn't I didn't know what the fuck that shit was. At uh, that's the age. first time I saw you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, look, man, real talk. People need to give you your credit on your your hey, video bro, your video right. appearances. <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> real I talk, man. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, Jack had a run. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Jack when I was 12, I was in the play with rerun yeah. from what's happening. Yeah. You know? Hey, man, but, hey Jack you know, was in the Plies video. Come on, man. Wow. That was the he same was. year. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of my and favorite Doing comedy, songs. all that shit, you know. But yeah, everybody got to come from somewhere, right, Gil? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's some things that, but even before uh, Goody Mob, people could go back and look at you here. Like, get the fuck out. Hold on. Gip was on Good Times. Was, Hold on, Gip, Gip was a guest, guest, guest uh, on the guest episode of Family Matters. Yeah, one of Steve Urkel <laughs> friends or something. Yeah, you'll see niggas in there that you like. Oh shit, he been here. Yeah, he been working. He yeah. been working, and then you you keep on going until you know God says it's that's time for go. you to take off. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Is. But uh, yeah, uh, I, I I didn't get it when the six nine thing. Was turning when you seen the spelling of his name, like no, I, think, I, right? I still didn't get. It. I thought you it was. Get it. I thought it was. Um, was I thought it was. What's the word? Right, right word I'm looking for. Alternative. Yeah, there you go. Well, they, they, Alternative they, lifestyle. They, I didn't get it. But, but really, it. but really, really, what it is? Gang culture. Yeah, gang. It, that's when I real. Yeah, yeah. When, and, you and, start, and, and you know whenever, what? Whatever you start putting numbers and. Things into your nigga, it's, it's gang culture. Hey, and you know what? I had I declined his invitation to do my show because of 
the simple fact when they told me it was about some gang shit, yeah. I yeah. I ain't want to fuck with it. Yeah, you know, cause yeah. I don't really, I don't listen. You know, to each his own, and no no shade to nobody that's in the gang for whatever reason you got it into that. This is not where when we went down here in Georgia we weren't really doing it like that. Yeah, it wasn't coming. You know what I'm that. saying? Yeah. Like it, when when I was in high school, we were laughing at folks when they were telling us they was in gangs. Yeah, like what you? T- because it was a West Coast thing at the time. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and they had to grow into what it is now. Yeah. Yeah. That's but, great. yeah, so you, just to go back to the origin of this, yeah, Six Lack threw me off. <laughs> 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 I mean, Black. No, too. man, I, I love Black. He, he got dope music. You know, he is dope. Yeah. I, 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 I I got a couple of his songs, too. Yeah, he hard. Uh, so, yeah, I like Black. Um, I mean, Breezy. Chris Breezy. Chris Brown. Yeah. Chris Breezy. Okay. Um. He got in a the gang. They got weird, you know, and all that rapid shit. I ain't really fucking with that. Yeah, but you know, you know. Uh, I, I mean, I say they they the top for me. Right. I like I like Black and Chris right now. Okay, man, you want to add me who I like? Yeah, please. Shit, man. That goddamn Key Sweat first album. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> they got that I'll be sure first album. Come on, man. You gotta get off on your own, bitch. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to I'm not. I'm not, man. <laughs> what do you say? We we got to go with we got to give Jodice's song. Come on, hey yo. Me and me and my dog argue about about KC every day. Hey, you got to give Jody. You gotta get them boys out of South Carolina. They do it. Yeah. Uh um Let me see. Oh uh, man. Hey, guy, man. Guy, Come on guy. now, I like guy. Okay. Part time lover. Oh my god, okay. it was crazy. You know, uh, I gotta put Unk in there, Mr. Bobby Brown. Yeah, and then there it is. Gotta That's him. Unk. You can't beat. You can't beat the Bobby. No, you can't. You, can't beat, the you can't beat the Bobby. Nothing beats the Bobby. <laughs> you can't beat Bobby, Bobby. birthed Chris Brown. He birthed Usher. Yeah, yeah, so yeah he birthed the, birthed the greatest. He, he was the turning point for R and B to get a little gangster yeah. and smooth and cool. To be the bad boy yeah. and the sex guy. Yeah, he yeah. was the guy. Yeah, he was that guy. Yeah. Them five albums right there, I watched my little rabbit out there in the front yard a whole bunch of time, man. You know, I be ten folk <laughs> in Atlanta, but that's how we want it, man. A sunny Sunday. Boy, some of that key sweat. Uh, boy, we about to ride Peachtree all day. Show up. <laughs> Show up. That's how we want it, man. We Show thought we up. was at the top of life. Yeah. So, you know, I, I just look at them times when we didn't, everything was so simple. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was very simple. No, it was very simple, man. You know, all you had to do was worry about your radio and your car getting stolen, right? <laughs> That's it. And you take your face off your shit yeah. and put it in your pocket. Yeah, that way. When we start learning how we could, we could take the steering wheel off and the face off, but oh, we were straight, you, man. You, they be in the mall with the club <laughs> with your steering wheel. <laughs> they be in the club with it got that wood grain right here, yeah. like yeah, yeah. Sean. Hey, you, 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 you check your you check your steering wheel in with your coat. Yeah, <laughs> people yeah. really don't understand. Like it was that. It was that simple where we thought we had everything with just those little accessories. Yeah. You know, and I don't know, bro. Like, you know, as the time had gone by now, I look at everybody, I'm like, man, we look like a goddamn country club, man. We look like boutique. Like everybody around here talking about, you know, what $100,000 club they go to or where they go spend $5,000 mm-hmm. to eat brunch. It's just like, man. Oh, you take it. You take a key to crank your car? Yeah, you take, oh, yeah, you can't have no key no more. You yeah, can't have no key no yeah, you more. Gotta push start. Uh, yeah, you got push to push start. your you, shit, yeah, If you man. ain't got no push start, you a straight duck. Come on, <laughs> man. Nah, and they got the keys now. You ain't even got to press the push start. You just keep on the key file. You got to yeah. walk by your car. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just so, cut on or some shit. So I'm, I'm just glad that right now, man, the Jane, give him words. Mm. Yes, sir. We already playing overseas in London. I haven't been on BBC in never. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. and James got me on there. Daddy. You know what I mean? So for me right now, I'm happy because I feel like uh, the record is doing very good overseas, being very accepted over here. And I just can't wait till we get out here and get on the road and really start performing the songs for the people. That's what I want. So that means this yes, is part sir. two coming. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. That's the crazy part. It, it, 
It only been out a month and a half, and everybody asking for the part two. I'm like, damn. Well, there it is. So, there I mean, is. next time y'all come on the show, y'all got to, you know what I'm saying, give us a, perform a song for us, man. We're going to have we gonna have our Video Soul shit set up then. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you remember Video Soul? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yes, sir. That, that and way. by the way, I heard that you was working on an album. Yes, I do. I'm gonna, hey, play my song. We, 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 got to, we got about to get out of here so they can get my song. Yeah. Hey, this band got a song with Music Soul Child. Yeah, man, I got a song with Genuine, nigga. And Genuine. Yeah. Man, and I got, got a song with Tank. You got some shit with Tank, Tank too. Yeah. You, got, you got a record with Tank, right? Yeah, I got a, I get, yeah. man, I got a song with RL. All kind, and we're going to play the song with RL and everything, man. I appreciate Jesus. that, James. Damn, yeah, me and Jack go back like he don't. He played his shit years ago. Mm. Yeah, 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 man. You know, just trying to get our welfare one day at a time. Hey, man. man, stop, man. Yeah, man, man stop, with this man. show now, you <laughs> just put your little, put your song things up after the show. The credits, man. Them folk yeah, buy right off what? TV. I was gonna yeah. make it the intro. Hey, you, you know what I'm saying? I don't but know why you wouldn't. Go to head then came up with that shit right there. You hey. like. Yo, you need to make your songs the intro to this shit. I'm hey, some, bro. It's bro. a rare condition <laughs> this day and age. <laughs> <laughs> you read in a good book. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Hey, uh, I appreciate y'all coming through the Blue oh, Jacket man, the thank you. Show, man. This is the first, but it ain't going to be the last time. Man, y'all give it up for King James Worthy and Gip Goody. Hey. Yeah, I'll see y'all next time, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Wiz, take the time with my you say you want a man with some money Six figures or more You swear you like the fun of things Well, girl, I'm pretty sure You're sleeping on a mattress on the floor Mattress on the floor Why you always flexing? Girl, you know you act And I look to you grieving I seen that mattress right there on the floor